Hello, everybody. Welcome to Saturday, Saturday, April the 25th. Today we're doing our 33rd quilt block, 33 quilt blocks. Today we're doing the fan dance quilt block. I'm going to give everybody a minute to jump in and join me. Let me pull up this video. Hope you're having a fantastic day. Whoops, I pulled up the wrong video. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Hi, Cindy. Yes, the fan dance quilt block. This is going to be a six inch quilt block. It'll actually finish today at six and a half by six and a half. And it, it'll finish in our quilt at six inches. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. So I wanted to make a small little correction before we get started yesterday's pieces and measurements uh, I had you cut an extra couple blocks right for our pieces today we need uh, the background fabric pieces we need the center circle fabric piece and then we need six other colors of fabric yesterday I had on there two of each but you actually only need one you need one color from six fabrics and those fabrics you cut two and three eighths by two and three eighths. So I'm sorry if yesterday you cut out your pieces, you're gonna have some extras <laughs> for the next fan dance block that you make. Hello everybody. And in the description box, you'll find a link to my Dropbox where you can get this one page PDF. Okay, this is the template that we're gonna use for the center of the fan dance. If you don't have a printer, uh, you can make your own circle, okay? Make a circle that measures five and a half by five and a half across a complete circle and then fold that circle two times. Fold it in half and then fold it in half again and that's going to give you the template that we're going to use for this block. So if you don't have a printer or you can't get this PDF printed out, cut yourself a circle five and a half inches wide, and then fold it two times. That's gonna be your little tracing template. We're not doing any curved piecing in today's video. No, we're not. <laughs> I'm gonna take a little bit of a shortcut with this block. Uh, I would print it in a portrait mode, not landscape. Thank you all so much for joining me today. Thank you for spending part of your Saturday with me. Thank you to my moderators. Thank you so much for keeping an eye on our chat, keeping it a fun place to be. And uh, most of all, I hope you use this time to socialize with everybody. This is supposed to be a happy, fun distraction amidst all the stuff that we have going on. And these videos are meant to combat loneliness depression, anxiety, and even if you're not making the quilt blocks, I hope you still follow along for those reasons, right? We might learn something along the way. We'll make some fun, pretty blocks along the way, but mainly we're here to spend some time with one another. If you don't have a fusible, can I pin? I use glue on my bunny. Yeah, you could do it the same way, Miss Connie. Do it the same exact way. Yay, you found me. You found me. Here we are. Yes, and if you have questions for me, thank you, Chantel, for the reminder. If you have questions for me, if you put them in all caps, it makes them really easy for me to go through all of the small little comments on my phone and keep up with it. So great to see you all. Yes, it is. And make sure you stay tuned to the end because I'm going to share with you the block and the pieces for tomorrow at the end of today's background. Debbie, if you wanted to make your background colors, it's your quilt block. And I always like to say, you know what, they're, Forget the rules. If you want to change the colors, you are more than free to do that. It is your fan dance quilt block, and you make it however you want to. Mimsy, that's a really great idea. 
That's a really great idea. I might do that. Uh, I'm still up in the air on how I'm going to fix his ear problem with the elastics, but <laughs> yes. So great to see you all. So great to see you. So we're going to go ahead and jump in for today. <clears throat> uh, I will be using a scrap piece of Heat and Bond Light to do mine, but you could do it with freezer paper if you don't have a fusible like uh, Heat and Bond Light or Wonder Under. Uh, you could use freezer paper or you could just cut it out and glue it if you really wanted to. Jadira, you made your very first quilt blocks yesterday. I'm so proud of you. That's such great news to start off our, our t -t -t tutorial today. Words are hard today. Yeah, Mimsy, there's quite a delay in what I say and when the comments pop up, so I totally missed that on Facebook. <laughs> There's quite a delay. There's even a delay here on YouTube as well. So when I say something, it's actually in the future because you don't hear it for about 30 seconds. <laughs> All right, everybody, we're going to go ahead and get started for today. I have some fun questions lined up. And you can play along with those if you want to. Connie says, I noticed you have rearranged your blocks. Did you add to the smaller ones? Will there be a printout of how we could, uh, of how we could out together? Uh, I did move some of my blocks around. I'm just playing with them. I have not added anything to that wall. Everything you see on the wall behind me is one of the blocks that we made in the live. I have not added to it at all. Uh, I will probably do a PDF in the way that I arrange my blocks at the end, but um, you certainly don't have to do it that way. But I will do a PDF of how I do it. Debbie, I'm in Virginia, Williamsburg, Virginia. I'm not far away from Delaware. How big does that yellow circle measure? I want to see if it printed out. It's a five and a half inches from side to side. Okay, from this side to this side is five and a half inches. So great to see everybody. Mary, I will write that down before we get started. A rectangular band, five by two inches with buttons. Yeah, because I've already made them like uh, four masks that are black and gray, <clears throat> solid color mask. He's in the Navy. So per his uniform, they have to be solid colors like black or, or gray or something like that. And uh, the ones I made have elastics in them. And after a while, they start hurting his ears. I would still like for him to be able to use them. But I'm also going to make some different masks this afternoon for him. <clears throat> so great to see everybody. Yes, it is. We're going to go ahead and switch this screen over. I'm going to show you all of my pieces. I have them cut out here. So just to clarify, the six different two and three eighths by two and three eighths, you only need one of each. Yesterday I had you needed two, but when I was cutting out my pieces early this morning, I realized that that was a typo. You only need one, <laughs> one of each, six of those, six backgrounds, two and three eighths. Then you need a background square that measures three and a half by three and a half. You need a yellow scrap about three and a quarter by three and a quarter. This is what we're going to cut our center piece from. And today I'm using heat and bond light. <clears throat> I did see Robin's video on that. I did. 
All right, everybody, we're going to go ahead and get started for today's video. Let me move some of this out of the way. We're going to start with our half square triangles for today, and we're going to knock those out. So I'm going to take my background two and three eight squares and my six different colored two and three eight squares. We're going to start with those, okay? We're going to start with those. The very first thing we're going to do is we're going to cut each one of these directly in half. So I'm just going to line them up on my mat. We're doing some smaller half square triangles today, y'all. This is going to be a six inch quilt block when we're done. It'll actually measure six and a half by six and a half. I have two squares, one on top of the other, just to speed up the cutting. I'm going to line those up on my mat. And we're going to cut them right in half. Corner to corner. We're cutting one time. That's going to give us 12 little blue triangles, right? So there's our 12 blue triangles. And then... I'm going to line up my six other pieces, my six other squares, line those up on my mat, and we're going to cut these in half the same exact way. As soon as I get these cut, we're going to start with today's questions if you want to play along. Lined up on the mat, we're cutting them right in half. There we go. Thank you, Chantel. I'll have to go back and read the suggestions about the mask once we're done. Because I'm. it's going to take everything I have to focus on today's block. <laughs> But thank you all so much for giving suggestions for the mask. I appreciate that a lot. Yes, I do. So that's our cutting for right now. I'm going to go ahead and line up these triangles. We're going to knock out these half square triangles first, okay? So I'm going to situate them just like this. Here's my stack of backgrounds. And here's my stack of multicolored, six different colors that makes up the other side of these half square triangles. We're going to lay them just like that for a second. I'm going to give you a second to catch up if you're sewing with me live. Nadine, we're not doing a curve. We're not doing curved piecing today. We're going to make, we're going to simplify the fan dance block. <laughs> we're going to simplify it a little bit today. So let's go ahead and start with our first question for today. Ah, Kathleen. Thank you so, so, so much. Wow, thank you so much. Ah, thank you. That's awesome. Our first question for today, who is your favorite singer? Who is your favorite singer? When I was growing up, Rick Springfield was my favorite singer. <laughs> Rick Springfield when I was growing up. Now I'd have a really hard time picking a favorite singer. For me, it would sort of be like a favorite band because I love Heart. I don't know if you've heard of Heart, but I'm a huge Heart fan. And I would say a single singer would probably be Seal. That's my favorite, all-time favorite, Seal. <laughs> 
All right, everybody, we're going to go ahead and start piecing together these half square triangles. I have them just lined up just like this. We're going to do some chain piecing before we rearrange this block, okay? Because all the backgrounds are the same, it doesn't much matter at this point. We're just going to be lining up a triangle, one of the different color triangles with a background triangle. And y'all, we are sewing on the longest side of the triangle. There's two short sides and a longer side. This is the side we're piecing. We'll flip the triangles pretty sides together and sew this seam with a quarter inch seam allowance. So we have, let's see, 12 half square triangles. You're gonna see me just piecing right through these to get them done. Quarter and seam allowance. Yes, I have it set. So there's the first one. We're just going through. Make sure they're pretty sides together. Line them up and sew the longer side. Twelve of these, twelve. By now we should be, <laughs> we should have so much practice in with the half square triangles, right? We should be getting pretty good with our half square triangles at this point. As soon as we're done and I have these pressed, I will let you know how big the finished half square triangle needs to be for this block. This is going to take a good minute. And I'm really trying to take my time in case you're sewing with me live. Your favorite singer. I will tell you, I've had the best time in the evenings going through and reading the live chat with all of the different answers. I really hope that you're having as much fun as I am with these videos. <laughs> Come on, separate, there you go. Separate. We can go ahead and move on to question number two. Question number two, what do you like the most about yourself? What do you like the most about yourself? Uh, Linda, I'm a huge fan of OmniGrid rulers. <laughs> My favorite brand is OmniGrid. If you want to help out Linda, name your favorite brand of ruler. One that measures six by 12. What's your favorite quilting rulers to use? The brand of them. We're still piecing these together. There's going to be 12 of them all together.
looking for online for questions to ask. <laughs> I saw the question, what would you change about yourself? But I really want to focus on the positive, right? So I'm saying, what is it? What is the thing you love the most about yourself? Lots of half square triangles. This is taking a good minute. Name something that you really like about yourself. Oh, we're getting down. We've got two more left to do. <laughs> Sometimes I think maybe I should pre-do parts of these blocks, but then that would cut down the time we get to spend with each other. And plus, I really want you to see each one of the steps and how long it takes to do them, right? So... All right, we're on our last one. If you don't like half square triangles, <laughs> you'll want to stay tuned for tomorrow's block because tomorrow's block has no half square triangles. Yay. <laughs> All right, there's all 12. All 12 half square triangles in a row. I'm going to snip these apart. Snip, 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 snip. <laughs> I like the fact that I'm creative, right? Wow, I would be so bored if I was not creative and finding things to keep myself busy. The next thing I'm going to do is go ahead and trim these dog ears, and I'm going to wake this iron up because it's getting ready to go to work here in about two minutes. You're getting ready to go to work. I'm going to go ahead and trim these little dog ears right off. I just want to thank y'all for spending part of your Saturday with me. I do not take your time for granted. I do not take it for granted at all. There's so many other things you could be doing. Maybe you're doing other things while you're listening. I do that a lot. I pull up videos and have them going in the background while I'm sewing or quilting or doing some other kinds of projects. I'm going to get these dog ears trimmed up. I'll go through and see if we have any questions here in just a second. And that will give my iron a chance to warm up as well. Lots of little bits trimmed off. There we go. Let's get rid of those. I'm going to give everybody a chance to catch up to this point right here. Thank y'all all so much for uh, suggesting your different favorite rulers. So great to see everybody. So great to see you. So great to see you. Yes. Okay. 
The next thing. The next thing we're going to do is press each one of these open. <laughs> and I'm a little bit of a slow presser, so y'all be patient with me. We'll go ahead and move to question number three. If you could eat only one food for the rest of your life, if you had to pick one food to eat for the rest of your life, and that's it, what would it be? Would it be pizza? Would it be tacos? Green bean casserole? I think I could probably eat that every day for the rest of my life. If you had to pick one and that's it for the rest of your life, what, what food would you pick? Harriet has a question. Let me go through and see. Yes, I did, Miss Harriet. Uh, at the very beginning, we took the squares that measured two and three eighths by two and three eighths. There were six background squares and then six colored squares, each one a different color. Two and three eighths by two and three eighths. We cut those directly in half and then we matched the colored P triangle up with a background triangle and we pieced those with a quarter inch seam allowance. So that's where we are at this point. How do you clean your cutting mat? Sometimes I use a little eraser. Sometimes I use an eraser. I've seen people make little scrunchies and uh, use a scrunchie on their, on their mats. Yes, I love some green bean casserole. We're having some of that for dinner tonight too. I'm gonna go ahead and start pressing these and I'm gonna be pressing my seams over to the darker side, okay? These are going to be smaller half squared triangles. <laughs> Vicky says, I can't stand eating the same food over and over again. All right, let's look at these. They should measure two inches by two inches. That is the finished size of our half square triangles today. So if you're making half square triangles in any other way and you're cutting them to size and squaring them up, two inches by two inches. <clears throat> I'm going to start laying them out on the mat. I could probably eat asparagus every day as well. I could I could eat asparagus every day. If you double size of each, would it make a 12 inch square? I am so horrible with math, Miss Mary. Hopefully someone can help you with that. Y'all go through and see Mary's question. If you double the size of each, would it make a 12 inch square? I'd have to sit down with a calculator, Miss Mary. <laughs> I'm almost thinking yes, but I don't want to say 100% sure. <laughs> We're coming right along, coming right along. I know, Nadine, I am, I am so hungry. Harlan is smoking some brisket outside, and he started up early this morning smelling that all morning long. I am so hungry right now. <clears throat> I 
Oh, I could eat bread every single day too. Yes, I love the carbs, the bread, <laughs> potatoes. Coming right along, we have two more left to press. All right. Half square triangles are done. Here's my 12 half square triangles. Smoked brisket, I know. I almost hated to say that out loud because you're not here eating with me. I wish I could share it. So great to see everybody. Thanks for spending part of your Saturday with me. We just finished up the half square triangle units for this block. There should be 12 of them. There's going to be two of each one of the colors, right? Just like this. Pretty little two inch half square triangles. That's where we are. The next thing we're going to do, we're going to move these off to the side. All of that work, we're just going to move it right off to the side. <laughs> uh, Bootsy, I'm using OBS. OBS, that's the software that I use to stream with. Yes, three cameras, right? You can do slideshows, you can share your screen, you can do all kinds of stuff. And OBS is a free streaming software that you can Google and find out more about and download. Pretty cool, right? Ah, thank you, Miss Namito. Thank you so much. You've been making mask. That's okay. Make your mask. These videos will be up here indefinitely, so you can come back in your whenever you're done. Right? Don't rush through that. Uh, and then come back and make the any of the blocks that you want to make. Right? They'll be here. Just waiting for you. Thank you so much. Yep, Bootsy, you can hook up uh, multiple cameras. Multiple cameras with OBS, which is really awesome. Really awesome, right? Next, we're going to bring in the little template that I shared with you. There is a link to my Dropbox. Yesterday... I shared a Google link, but then I realized I have to approve each and every one that comes through. And I just, I don't have the time for that to sit by my computer and hit approve for each and every one. And so until I can figure out the settings where it automatically lets you do it, we're just going to use the Dropbox. If you're in the Creative Crew group, this template is in the file section, so you can grab it there as well. This is the template that we're going to use, and I have a piece of Heat and Bond Light. The adhe adhesive, words are hard, is the bumpy side. We are tracing our image on the smooth side, okay? I'm not even going to bring over the light box because I think you can see that image right through there. We're going to take a pencil or a pen. We're going to go ahead and trace this template right onto our adhesive. Just like this. Like this. And if you don't have a printer and you want to make this block, cut yourself a circle that measures five and a half inches from side to side. Five and a half inches from top to bottom. And once you cut that out, you'll fold it in half and then fold it in half one more time. And that gives you the perfect size template to trace for this block. Okay? So if you don't have a printer, that's another way that you can do this block. I'm 
to go ahead and trim off some of the extra around my shape. At this point, I'm not cutting directly on the line. I'm just giving myself a little bit of extra around my shape, but I don't really need all of that extra fusible, right? Now, following the directions for pressing for the type of fusible that you're using, we're going to take our yellow center fabric. We're going to turn it over to the unpretty side, the back side, and we're going to fuse this shape right onto our yellow piece of fabric just like this. Okay, I'm going to do that. No steam, no steam. There we go. And I'm going to let that cool off for just a second, just a second. Angel, send me an email to lisacapeandquilts at gmail.com and maybe you can help me change my setting with the Google sharing, <laughs> the Google cloud sharing, whatever I was doing. I would like to change it. I don't want to have to accept every single request to share a document. I want it to automatically approve if I share the link for it. What needle size am I using? That is a good question. I've had that needle in. I don't know how long. <laughs> I think it's like a 1280. Let me take a look. Let me take a look. Let's see. Which ones did I use? Which ones did I use? Yes, I believe it's a 1280. I could not be for certain though. <laughs> I think your needle size really depends on the type of thread you're using and the type of fabric that you're sewing, right? What is the difference between seams to one side or opening them? If you open your seams and press them open, your block will ultimately be flatter when you're done, right? And sometimes if you're pressing to the side, you might lose a little bit in your overall size of your block if you're not really careful. Um, pressing to the side helps you nest your seams which gives you those exact little pretty points, right? Uh, that's one of the reasons why I press my seams to one side or the other, but you can definitely press them open if you like. going through and making sure that I haven't missed anything. All right, everybody, we're ready to go ahead and cut out this shape and I'll ask question number one, two, three, four. Oh, I've got a lot of food questions. I'm sorry. I'm, I've got a lot of food questions today. What did you eat for dinner yesterday? At this point, we're going to go ahead and cut out our shape directly on the line that we traced onto our fusible. Okay? We're cutting directly on the line. Just like this. I don't want to say we're cheating today. We're just doing a simpler version of the fan dance, <laughs> right? It's just a simpler version. So here is our middle circle shape. At this point, you can remove the paper off of the fusible on the back. You 
You should have the shiny stuff on the back side of your fabric, just like that. That's your fusible. And we can bring in our center block, which measures three and a half by three and a half. And we're going to line this up directly on the edge. Just like this, right along that raw edge. This raw edge will be in our seam allowance. We're going to do an applique stitch or a zigzag stitch, a blanket stitch, a satin stitch, some kind of stitch to secure this raw edge along the curved side of the circle. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and bring this to the iron and I'm going to press that right into place. Just like that. So great to see everybody. We had Popeye's chicken last night. Of course, the dine-in area is not open, so we had to sit in the drive-thru. And the line of cars for the drive-thru wrapped all the way around the building. <laughs> yes, it did. And then once we got home, we realized that our order wasn't right. Popeye's is not right down the street. It's a good long hike. It takes about 25 minutes to get there. Once we finally got home with driving in the car with the smell of fried chicken, we realized that our order was not right. Popeye's chicken. It was good though. <laughs> it was good. So this is where we are. This is where we are. I just want to thank all of my moderators today. Thank y'all so much for t looking out after our chat. At this point, we're ready to go ahead and sew down the raw edge. We're not sewing on the raw edges of our square. We're just doing a stitch on the curved area and I have black thread in my sewing machine. I'm using black so that you can see my stitches. Thank you so much. I'll have to go through and uh, read the live chat when we're done to figure out the Google issue, but I would definitely check that out. Thank you so much because uh, yeah, I would love to be able to fix that. Thank you so much. I'm using black thread so you can see what I'm doing. I would suggest that you use a thread color that's gonna blend in with your yellow and so it just sort of is hidden, right? My thread is gonna show up so that you can see what I'm doing. I'm going to use a zigzag stitch. However, you could pick any of the stitches really on your sewing machine. Let's see. Switching over to a zigzag stitch. I want to make sure that my stitch is right. So I'm just going to do some testing real quick to set the length and the width. Let's bring it closer together. There. I like that. So in case you're wondering, <laughs> my zigzag stitch is set at a 0.9 for the length and a 3.0 for the width. Of course, you can change your settings, uh, but that's what I'm going to use for my zigzag stitch. We're going to start on the raw edge up at the top and go right around the curvy part of our circle. Just 
like this, following all the way around. Ordinarily, I would not have picked black thread to do this. <laughs> but I want you to be able to see the stitches. If you used a yellow thread, it would just blend right in there. You'd really have to be right on top of it to see that you didn't curve piece that in there, right? Once you're done with your zigzag stitch or whatever stitch you're using, make sure to set your machine right back to your quarter inch seam allowance. So here's my piece, just like that. I'm gonna press it real quick and then I'll try to hold it up to the camera so you can see it really well. There we go. There we go. If I would have used a yellow thread, it would have blended right in there. Okay, so you're only really stitching down the curved part of this quarter circle. It doesn't necessarily have to be a tighter stitch for curves. Uh, we're not really doing curved, true pieced curve seams, right? Uh, this is more like applique and you just really need to secure that raw edge and that'll help keep it from lifting because I used a heat and bond light which is not a permanent adhesive. So we're just stitching down just like we're treating this like applique. If you make it too tight you might get some puckering in your background. What sizes are the half square triangles? They are two inches by two inches. Two inches by two inches. Once you have this stitched, that's all the pieces for this block. And we can go ahead and start playing with the layout of all of the pieces. All of our little tiny half square triangles, let's get them all up here. <laughs> the half square triangles will just outline this center square with our circle applique just like that. So let's go ahead and start with that right in the center there. And then I'm just going to start playing with my half square triangles just like this. Because we used six different colors I want to make sure that I'm not putting any of the two side by side. So it's just going to take me a second to play with the arrangement. Uh, yes, like this and like this. And it's going to look a little funny for a minute because we haven't pieced together our block. So we have our seam allowances in here. All of your half square triangles should be going in the same direction. Like this. And like that, I'm going to scoot everything out and make sure I have it all right. <laughs> 
you should have four half square triangles along the top and bottom and then two half square triangles right on the sides just like this let's swap those just spread these colors out a little bit yeah just like that Catherine, I have not thought about doing a retreat. That would be fun, wouldn't it? Yes. You need to hold retreats around the country. Am I interested? Perhaps that would be a lot of fun, wouldn't it? That would be so much fun. That would be a lot of fun. Okay, at this point, we're going to start doing some piecing to complete this block. We're going to move on to our last question, and then we have some this or that's, right? And guess what? This one is food related to. I've had food on the brain all day today. What is your favorite pizza toppings? Favorite pizza toppings. A, a retreat would be really awesome, wouldn't it? A retreat would be a lot of fun. What are your favorite pizza toppings? So what I'm gonna do is start doing some chain piecing. I want to start with this row right here. I'm going to flip this second block over right on top of the first one and sew this seam. I'm going to break it up so that I don't mess up the order of my squares. <laughs> We're going to piece together this bottom row first. Make sure you've switched your machine over back to the quarter inch. We're going to piece together those half square triangles. And I'm going to sit right here at the machine, open them up, finger press them down and bring over the next one. Make sure it's going in the right direction. Flip it over and sew that one. We'll flip this one over, flatten that out, and bring over the fourth one. And there is our first row. I'm going to go ahead and press that. square triangles all over the place today so here's the bottom row all nice and pretty I'm gonna start working on this row right up here let's flip this first one down line them up and sew those And we're going to bring these over one by one, finger pressing along the way. I like to break it up this way so that I don't accidentally get all of my pieces out of order. <laughs> Thank you. 
So here's our top row. I'm going to press that. Bottom yellow, upside down. Are you talking about my pieces? There's our top row. You're so funny. Bottom and top rows are done. Now we can piece these, right? Let's flip this one here and flip this one here. We are sewing the connecting seam there and there. There's that one and this pair. Now this quilt block is really going to start taking shape. We can press these little pieces. Lots of little half square triangles for this block. So that goes on that side and that goes on that side. We're coming right along. We're going to move over to the this or that questions. This or that. Kayla. Hello, my sweet angel. I miss you so, so much. Auntie misses you so much. I love you. All right, everybody. This or that. Do you like to sleep in late or get up early? Kayla. Y'all, I just want to give a shout out to my little niece, Kayla. I say little, but no, she just had a birthday. She's not little anymore, y'all. She has grown up to be quite a fine young lady. Hello, Miss Kayla. All right. Do you like to sleep in late or get up early? Sleep in late or get up early. Let's go ahead and work on this middle section right through here. We're going to flip over our half square triangles on both sides, okay? To start off, we'll do this side and then bring over the other side. We're gonna match up that raw edge and sew that with a quarter inch seam allowance. I know, 12 years old, Miss Kayla, I cannot believe it. 12 years old. I used to love to sleep in. But now if I sleep in past seven, I, I don't feel very well for the rest of the day, which is crazy. There's my first seam. I'm going to go ahead and press that.
sleep in late or get up early. So here's our first one. We're gonna flip this one right over and repeat that quarter inch seam allowance on this side. Would you rather, here's the next this or that, would you rather see a local band or go to a big concert? All right, this block is coming right along. Coming right along with the fan dance. So at this point, we have two more seams to finish up this block. I'm going to give everybody a second to catch up if you're sewing with me live. Jill, this is going to be one of your favorite blocks. It is pretty, right? It is pretty. Lots and lots of colors. I, I like that. Miss Wanda, I have not taught Miss Kayla, although her mom makes quilts too. So that's a good question. Kayla, have you learned how to use your, uh, your mom's sewing machine yet? I was 12 when I got my very first sewing machine, so that would be an awesome Christmas present, right? Sewing machine, don't you want one, Kayla? <laughs> To finish up this block, we have two more seams, y'all. Let's go ahead and flip this top row right onto this middle section. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try to be really careful. I want to match up the seam from this section here, right there in that seam. I want those seams to line up and I want these seams to line up if possible, right? If we can do that, I'm gonna to try to do that. I'm gonna flip this over and bring that to the sewing machine and sew that with a quarter inch seam allowance. This is when pressing your seams to one side or the other really comes in handy because you can nest those seams right together. They sort of lock together. So that's the first one. Keeping it nice and straight all the way down to the other side. And while we're here, I'm gonna go ahead and flip it over and bring in this other side as well. I wanna make sure we don't accidentally flip it and sew it the wrong way, right? Let's make sure that our triangles are going the right way. Flip it over and sew this last seam for this block. Line up that raw edge. And 
And that was our last seam for this block. I'm gonna go ahead and press this. I'll check to see if we have any questions. I can already see my block's a little tiny wonky. It got a little wonky, y'all. That's all right. That's all right. We'll trim it up once I'm done. <laughs> Got a little wonky. All right, here we go. That middle block is three and a half by three and a half. So there is my finished fan dance. Oops, let's turn it this way. Fan dance. You can see I'm going to have to trim that off a little bit. <laughs> I don't know what happened there. I don't know what happened there. I think we have a question about the size, finished size of this block. One, two, three, four, five, six and a half. One, two, three, four, five, six and a half. You can see mine got a little wonkety wonkety there. I'll end up squaring this up. I'll probably stretch it out just a little bit. Just stretch it right on out a little bit. Press it one more time really well and then just trim that off. But it should measure six and a half by six and a half. There she is. Just like that. If each half square triangle is two inches, isn't this going to be an eight inch block? Angel, uh, that two inches, you have to account for your seam allowance. So on each two inch block, you have half an inch that is gonna end up in a seam allowance. Nope, I didn't use any pins. No pins. <laughs> I just go for it. I always say you can use pins if that helps you or glue based. I'm a huge fan of glue basting. Our last this or that for today. If you could go exploring, would you explore the deep sea or would you explore outer space? That block is too big. Did it get trimmed down to size? I have not trimmed any of this. The sizes of the half square triangles are two inches by two inches, and then you sew them into your block. They end up being a one and a half inches wide once you're done sewing them. Of course, you have your seam allowance over here, right? So this is one and three quarters because you still have your seam allowance right in there. When this gets sewn to another quilt block, there's your quarter inch seam right there. This will be one and a half by one and a half finished. Yes, Miss Nadine, we treated the half circle like applique. We did not do a curved piecing. Did 
Just going through and making sure I've got all the questions. Miss Joan has a question. If that a needle book, interesting. Is that the question? <laughs> oh, yes. Yes, a friend of mine made that for me. Just going through, going through. So yes, this is our finished fan dance block. I have to square mine up a little tiny bit, but it does finish six and a half by six and a half. Bye, Miss Kayla. I love you. I hope we get to see each other soon. I have Easter eggs all filled with candy for you and your sisters and your brother. They're just waiting here for when we can get together. Hug your mama, hug your daddy, hug your brother and your sisters for me. I'm going to go ahead and move over to tomorrow's block and pull that up on the screen. Tomorrow's block is another six inch quilt block. You're going to need four colors of fabric and I have on this screen all of the pieces and the sizes if you want to cut them out ahead of time and meet me here tomorrow. This is the block we're making. This is the block we're making. And if you repeat it, this is what it would look like as a quilt. Yeah, I'm not a huge fan. Bye, Miss Kayla. I love you. I'm not a huge fan of curve piecing myself. And so I am a fan of doing applique. So we took an easier route with our fan dance block for today. <laughs> Dinetta, uh, your son is watching. Hello. So great to have you watching too. Yeah, come on in. If it's relaxing, that's what these videos are all about, right? Let's have something to distract us from all the crazy stuff that's going on right now. Yes, the shooting squares block. You'll need four colors. These are your fabrics for tomorrow. This should be a lot of fun, and I believe this block will be a lot easier than the block we did today, right? 12 half square triangles in today's block. I'm going to take this off the screen because that's a lot to look at, but I want you to notice too before I do that, that when you make this block and you put them together in rows, they form a secondary pattern, right? They form little pinwheels in between. That's pretty cool, right? I love the secondary patterns that show up when you do that. Ms. Connie, it is my middle block that is off size. Are you talking about today's fan dance block? It should be fan dance, fan dance. Your middle block, when you... Before you sew it in your quilt, it should be three and a half by three and a half. Once it's done being sewn into your block, it finishes at three inches by three inches. You're welcome, Miss Sue. Yeah, I like to take the block and, and lay it out in a quilt so that you get an idea because maybe you don't want to make all of those blocks behind me, right? <laughs> maybe you don't want to do that, but maybe you have a favorite block out of one of these and you just want to use that in a quilt, but you're wondering what would it look like? I like to give examples. Sherry, uh, the orange and the dark green, because we're going to be cutting those pieces tomorrow. For tomorrow's block, 
the two and five eighths by two and five eighths is going to be cut. Let's see, two times, two times, I think. I don't know. Stay tuned for tomorrow. But you're going to start off with squares that are two and five eighths by two and five eighths. And we're going to cut them to give us the little triangles that go around the perimeter of this block. Vicki, you are so right. Meals are making a huge wave in the quilting world. They sure are. Yes. Yes, they are. Yes, they are. You are so welcome, Miss Nadine. Thank y'all all, all for following along with me today. If you have any questions after the live today and you come back, you can write them down in the comment section. I like to check those as often as I can and get back to you as soon as possible. Oh, uh, do I have those mixed up? All right, hold on a second. Let me check to make sure I don't have those mixed up for tomorrow. B, B, B. Let's see. Yellow. Hold on a second. I want to make sure all those measurements are right <laughs> before we move on. Before you start cutting out pieces. Before you start cutting out your pieces, where are we? The yellow. Yes, the yellow one, four and a quarter, we're cutting two times, okay? The light green, we're cutting two times, yes. And then the other ones, the two and five eighths by two and five eighths, no, those are not getting cut. I was mixed up. <laughs> I have to look at the instructions I've written down. So the ones we're actually cutting are the four and a quarter by four and a quarter, not the two and five eighths by two and five eighths. That was my bad. I'm so used to doing half square triangles, y'all. The five eighths. We're actually cutting the yellow and light green four and a quarter by four and a quarter. We'll be cutting those two times to give us our triangles for tomorrow. That was my bad. Pacific Northwest Retreat. Wow, I'd be doing some traveling, wouldn't I? It's a pleasure to have y'all join in too, Miss Hazel. It, it certainly is. It certainly is. No. Four and a quarter by four and a quarter. Nope. And the orange and the dark green, two and five eighths by two and five eighths. We're going to be putting those on point. So the measurements are a little weird. Two and five eighths by two and five eighths. Hello in Germany. Nova Scotia, wow. Colorado, Canada. You're so welcome, Miss Jackie. You're so welcome. I'm sorry. I'm just sitting here reading through the comments.
It's so great to see everybody. I am hoping that you can join me tomorrow about the same time here on YouTube. This is the block we're sewing. And we're going to do it live. It'll be the first time I've made the shooting squares block. I keep wanting to call it shooting stars. But it's not. Shooting squares. And I look forward to seeing you then. I hope you all have a fantastic afternoon. I don't take your time for granted. So thank you so, so much for spending some time with me. Miss Wanda, hold on a second. You have a question. If you wanted it to be a 12 by 12 inch block, could I double the size? Miss Wanda, I'm not good with the math on the spot. <laughs> You'll have to sit down with the calculator. Oh, here, Sally. Sally did the math for you. Thank you so, so much. Thank you, Miss Sally. She's our math expert. Miss Catherine, I, I'm with 100% surety can say that this, doing this live every day won't be my new normal once we get back to our normal everyday lives. But I would like to do a live a week for sure here on YouTube, at least once a week. But uh, I have so many ideas for quilt patterns and other art quilts and stuff that are just sitting off to the side that I'm really kind of looking forward to getting back to finishing those things. But yes, I've had a lot of fun doing the live every day. It's been a lot of fun. No Zooms tonight. Uh, I have a lot of stuff going on this afternoon and this evening. We'll be Zooming tomorrow on Creative Crew Group. Are you saying you only cut one, four and a quarter square four times? Absolutely, yep. We're gonna take one square of fabric and I don't have any squares of fabric right here, so we'll use my block. Pretend this is your four and one quarter inch block. We're gonna cut it two times and I'm gonna show you tomorrow. <laughs> That'll be tomorrow's video. But yes, you're gonna take each one. You'll have a yellow one and a green one. It should measure four and a quarter inches. And we're gonna be cutting that tomorrow. Did you say the yellow will be cut so straight is on the edge? Miss Claudette, I'm not quite sure. We're going to be cutting it from corner to corner, diagonal cuts across the square. There are no more questions for today. Bye, Miss Sally. Thank you so much. Thank you for answering all the math questions. Thank you for moderating. And I want to thank everybody else too, Miss Chantel, Miss Janet. Thank you all so much for moderating our chat today as well. It really helps me to uh, really focus on what we're doing so that I don't get all my stuff mixed up. Sometimes I still do though. Sometimes I still get my pieces mixed up but it really helps with y'all moderating the chat. Dorothy, that's a great idea. If you start your uh, fabrics, the yellow and the light green, uh, it'll help 
keep your fabrics from distorting when, while you're cutting and while you're piecing tomorrow. Nadine, you have some masks to deliver. That's awesome. All right, everybody. I look forward to showing you how to make this block tomorrow. I look forward to the time we get to spend together. I'm going to go add the fan dance block up on the wall. Had a lot of fun making this block. Yes, I did. Can't wait to see you all tomorrow about the same time. I'll see everybody then. Bye.